The final stage of the installation is the Joomla web installer. This lesson demonstrates how to navigate through these pages so you can start using Joomla. This is the last step in the Joomla installation process. Before starting, make sure you have the database details that you created in the previous lesson. Now open your browser and bring up the web address where you uploaded your Joomla files. For these lessons, I'll create a website called joomlavideodemo.com. When I enter www.joomlavideodemo.com, Joomla recognises that it hasn't been set up yet and redirects to the web installer. Step 1 is to choose a language. This is just used for this installation step, so it doesn't affect any content you create later. I'll go with English and click the Next button that appears in the top right. The installer then checks your web server to make sure that Joomla will run successfully. In Lesson 3, you learned that there are certain requirements for using Joomla. If any of the items in the top box are marked as No, then you should stop and ask your host if they can be resolved before you proceed. The first four items are the really important ones, so make sure they are all showing Yes. There is also the Recommended Settings list in the second box. If any of these are read, then you can continue, but you might run into difficulties down the track, so ask your host if they are able to make these changes on your account. Click the Next button in the top right, and read the license details. Then click Next again. Now enter your database details. These are the database details that were created in the previous videos, not something else, such as your FTP details. The first setting in the drop-down box can be left at My SQL I, or if this doesn't work when you navigate to the next page, try setting it to My SQL. Unless your host has told you otherwise, the host name is localhost, so enter that here. Then enter the database username you created in the username box. In my case, I used joomlavi underscore demo. Then the database username password. Next enter the database name, which in my case was just Joomla VI underscore video demo. And finally, in the table prefix box, change the default setting of JOS underscore to a different combination of random letters, such as SYD. You can leave it at the default setting, but changing it improves your website security. Leave the last setting and click Next. As long as you enter the correct details, you'll see this screen. The FTP layer is a nice feature, but it can cause more problems than it's worth if you get the settings wrong. So to simplify this lesson, let's keep this set at No. If your web host is well placed to host Joomla sites, then this feature is unnecessary. But if you have trouble completing the installation, then this might need to be enabled, and this process is demonstrated in the next lesson. So click Next. Now give your site a name, and enter your email address. You also need to create a username and password, which is used to access the administrator part of your website. You can see that a default username of admin is entered, but for the best security, it's a good idea to change this now. So enter a new username, I'll use Bilpin, and a password. The last step is to install some sample data. This is a really good idea when you're starting out, and I'll be referring to this data throughout the lessons, so go ahead and click the Install Sample Data button. This will take a second and then tell you that it's been successful. Click Next. As you can see, Joomla has now been successfully installed. However, before you can view the site, you need to delete the installation folder. 
simply click this button and then click the site button in the top right to view your newly installed site that contains some sample data. You might like to spend a few minutes looking through the pages. In the next lesson, you'll learn about the front end and back end of Joomla. Congratulations, you're now ready to build a Joomla website. Once you get the hang of how to create pages, as demonstrated in the following lessons, you'll probably want to know how to do some common things, such as how to add a Google Map, Google Analytics, and sitemaps. Our next course, Beyond the Basics, includes several lessons on these topics and more. This is the course that I wish existed when I started working with Joomla. The very first thing I wanted to do was create feedback forms, so that's included in this course too. But the most important lessons are on email marketing. Whether you are a business or a non-profit, regularly communicating with your audience via email is the most effective way to make money online and save money with distribution costs. Learn more about Beyond the Basics by clicking the link that appears on this page and head over to the relevant page on our site.